Hello, everyone. So excited for you all to be joining us today. Thank you all for taking the time. Uh, my name is Lou. I'll introduce myself in a moment, but we here at the Linkfire team are so um, thrilled to be um, running this first webinar, launching uh, with this Linkfire 101 um, session for you all. Um, and I think it's time for me to share my uh, slides and to get going. Um, so welcome to Linkfire 101 Getting Started. Um, just a quick rundown um, of our agenda um, and some housekeeping items before we get into the nitty gritty. Um, this session is going to be recorded uh, and will be sent to you after the event. So don't worry about jotting down too many notes. If you do have any questions, please add them to the question section at the bottom right of your screen and we'll try to answer them towards the end of the session at our Q&A. Uh, and lastly, feel free to use the chat function throughout the session to share your general comments and thoughts. I'm so excited to have uh, attendees from all around the world. So please let us know where you're checking in from um, and uh, how excited you are to be here uh, rocking with us today. Um, uh, so uh, as your MCs for today, um, uh, myself, my uh, name is Lewis Pratt. I am a customer success manager here at Linkfire uh, and my role is essentially to help our uh, customer base succeed and grow utilizing our platform as best as they can. Uh, I am a 10 year music and technology industry professional. I've worked major label and independent label side. I've worked um, agency and consultant side. I'm also a creative uh, myself as well as an artist um, and have worked as a journalist and an artist manager over uh, my years. Um, but I'm really excited to help uh, bridge um, the business and the technology and the vision um, with you all today. Uh, and I'm joined by um, a wonderful expert on our team, um, a, a veteran of uh, the Linkfire um, team and journey thus far, um, Joss. So Joss, if you wouldn't mind just quickly introducing yourself for our audience today. Yeah, thanks Lou. Hi everyone, um, my name's Joss uh, and I am, I've had a couple of different hats here at Linkfire, um, but I am currently a product manager, which means that I'm responsible for uh, planning and prioritizing uh, the products and features that we build. And I'm working with a team of engineers and designers to, to bring those um, features to life. Um, listening to, to, to customers and, and hopefully trying to, to, to make the right decisions on, on what we build and when. Um, and my background is also in music. I uh, worked for Universal Music for a number of years in marketing and then uh, in artist management as well, working um, across uh, yeah, various different artists at different sizes, different parts of their career. Um, and yeah, hopefully I can offer a few thoughts and tips uh, that might be of some use. Amazing. So happy to have you here with us today, Joss, uh, and excited to dig into our Linkfire 101 session. Um, so as far as our agenda goes for today, uh, we are planning on introducing you all to the platform, um, doing a quick um, tour of the platform, chatting a bit about link creation, uh, insights and board level priorities and streamlining. Uh, as well, we will wrap up with some um, uh, top-down level music marketing tips and tricks, uh, some key takeaways, and lastly, wrap around with some Q&A with some of the pre-submitted questions and some of the live questions that may come through um, throughout the session. So without further ado, let's dive in. Um, here at Linkfire, we have a vision of empowering entertainment discovery everywhere. Um, all of uh, what we do, what we build, uh, is to essentially empower and provide support for the creatives and the groups of individuals around them within our music and entertainment business ecosystem. Uh, give them the tools and the means to activate um, and to monetize their arts uh, and their work um, in a multitude of ways. So. Overall, we have built this smart link platform, uh, this technology that is used um, uh, on the daily by uh, various players in the music business um, to help them um, collect and leverage traffic um, from their audiences, from their uh, fan bases, um, and collect the very important types of data that they need to continue to influence their decision making um, as they move forward with growing and optimizing any of um, the work that they're doing. 
Uh, as well, we are um, building out um, a continued um, link fire discovery network. <clears throat> and essentially, um, with our industry leading smart link platform, um, publishers and additional partners, websites, etc, have begun to utilize our technology, power their links, uh, integrate widgets and other types of lightweight tools um, that help to contextually recommend uh, entertainment and media to fans all around the world. Uh, we have a vision where every time you discover a new artist or fall in love with a new song, that Linkfire is providing some easy path for you to consume that music or that art that you love. Um, Linkfire is powering tons of connections, 1.6 billion connections just last year in 2021 alone, um, and hoping to continue to see that number soar as we uh, develop and evolve the technology. So overall, how the Linkfire platform works, um, the first steps involve uh, you or your team creating a Linkfire smart link um, in support of one of your products. You would identify and deploy that link. You would post that link somewhere um, that it is valuable um, to your audience, usually a marketing channel of some kind. When a visitor clicks on that link, um, they are obviously interested in uh, the artist, the product, um, or consuming uh, the art uh, within, they will be presented a uh, curated list, a landing page of options, uh, places they can go to consume um, that music or that media. They would then select one of those um, DSPs or one of those um, providers of content. Um, they would land where they need to and uh, begin enjoying uh, their music or their media, while our system um, then logs um, the types of engagements and data points um, that we need on the business on the promo side to continue moving forward um, and improving our efforts with reaching our audiences. Uh, overall, we are trusted by a, a, a swath of industry leading partners, um, labels, distributors, um, artist managers, artists. Um, and overall, we just wanted to give a big thank you to you all without you um, all in our wider interconnected ecosystem. Um, this all doesn't happen. This doesn't um, come to be. Um, and one of the beautiful things about this interconnected ecosystem is that um, you can look to um, your various collaborators, um, to other artists and businesses in the industry for inspiration, um, for um, ways to improve your own efforts. Um, the music business is one of the only industries where there really is no rule book, there is no playbook. So um, it, it's in our best interest to keep our eyes peeled and to keep our ears open um, to the rest of the industry as we continue to um, make moves. Um, overall, within the Linkfire platform, we empower you to uh, achieve uh, a handful of different types of goals, like maximizing your reach, um, increasing streams, building fan bases, selling tickets, or developing brands. And we do this by providing you a variety of features and link types um, to put forth in the marketplace uh, to achieve your goals. Um, so we have um, a variety of links. We have our um, cornerstone release link landing pages. Um, we have our um, very cool pre-release links that allow you to collect consents and deliver um, products upon release date um, automatically through some, um, uh, some streamlined technology. We have reward links, uh, reward links, excuse me, that allow you to um, continue to engage your fans in organic ways and deliver them some goodies in the process while collecting some important first party data. Uh, we have ticket links that help you um, may basically make the most of and um, do a better job at promoting your live events or events in general. And then we also have bio links. Um, which are becoming more and more important um, as a more versatile um, link style um, utilized in these bio sections of links themselves um, as we sort of move forward into the future um, of our tech um, and this complicated streaming um, and media consuming world. Um, so knowing that we have a lot to dig into today, um, Feel free to jump in the chat with any um, questions or concerns, but we are going to kick off right away uh, with a bit of a platform tour. 
um, and just show you a, a couple of places uh, in the platform that you might want to key in on. Um, and uh, every uh, so often I'll be kicking Joss a question or an opportunity to add some of his um, color commentary and his expertise into the mix as well. So let me do a quick screen share swap. And let me move over to our platform. And at this point, um, we should be good to go and get into uh, a quick tour of the Linkfire platform. Um, one thing that I always love to start uh, any onboarding call, any um, sort of training call with our customers is to quickly shout out this Learn tab. Uh, this Learn tab will lead to the Linkfire Help Center, which has a variety of um, how-to articles, step-by-step -step instructions, as well as video guides. Um, in the case you want to give a quick search of a keyword or a process you are trying to break down um, uh, you know, and um, perform on your own, um, that is an excellent resource to start off with. Um, but for the most part, when you log into Linkfire, you'll land on a dashboard, which gives you some top-down insights on your board uh, at large. A board is your collection of links all in one place. Um, but for the most part, your bread and butter will be creating and managing the links themselves. So we will jump in here and start with our link tab. Um, the link tab you can display either in a list or via a tile view, but overall this is just a place where you can get a top down of your links, create new ones, but also jump in, edit settings, um, collect the various links you need to post, um, even click through to check out some of the data. So overall when you are ready to um, uh, crack on with a new link, you'll click this um, handy green create link button. Um, and that will drive you to um, your various link types, including maybe even um, some special new ones that we're working on. And maybe Joss has um, some thoughts on that for us in a bit. But whenever you're starting your process, you will be selecting the most appropriate link type for your needs at the moment. Um, when you do so, say you need a, a link for a release that you are promoting, um, you would then be presented with um, the opportunity to insert a release link or a source code. Um, and Joss, this might be the, the, the perfect place for you to jump in and just quickly explain what a, a source code is and just a, a little bit uh, about our technology and what empowers us to automate and create these links for our customers. Yeah, sure. Um... So I think to, to try and give a sort of just top level overview, I mean, this is kind of where, where the magic happens. So Linkfire has integrations with uh, some 53 uh, different services. Um, and we're able to, to scan those services and find products and matches. And in some cases we get feeds from them um, daily as well. So we have a whole heap of information at our disposal. Um, all you need to do as a user is give us something in order to go and search all of those catalogs. So um, we use multiple different data points. So one of those um, could be a UPC, which is a universal product code. One could be an ISRC, um, which is an international standard recording code, both of which you would have as you, if you're a distributor or you could get from your distributor. Um, or you can just give us the, uh, a link to your product that's already on a service. So on maybe Spotify or Apple Music, we can, you can input that source. We will then go and fetch bits of information, including the UPC ISRC code, song title, uh, artist name, song length. We then use those bits of information to go and search all of the other services and find the exact same product. Um, so we have a, an algorithm that sort of prioritizes bits of data over other ones, like a UPC, we know that that's gonna be 100% match. If we can't match on a UPC, we'll look at the artist name or the track title, and then we'll, we'll give it a match score. So um, once we've gone and done that scanning, you go into your link, you'll see all of the matches that we've, um, that we've found. And if we weren't able to be 100% certain that we found the right, the exact, exact same product, then we'll give it a match score there and you have the opportunity to go and review it and make sure that it's, um, the right product, or you can change it 
scan again, use a different source. Um, so yeah, that's that's what we mean when we say give us a, a release source on that first uh, on that first step. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Joss. Um, overall, the process of creating links is uh, fairly similar across um, the majority of the link types, whereas you would be inserting a source so that our system knows what product to deliver to um, the end visitor. Um, and then would give you some opportunities to customize the link um, and the experience um, for that visitor. Um, who's hoping to uh, enjoy whatever you are, have for them. So in this case, um, before you jump into customizing um, the aesthetics and the, uh, you know, the organization of the services you want to provide, you'll have the opportunity to add some um, information within the system to help with your um, organizing and your workflows, things like um, the artists, any additional tags that might be helpful. Um, importantly, um, and um, I guess this is a, a great place to, to add a caveat that not every one of these features is available across all of our subscription types. If you see something that you don't have at the moment and you're interested in um, finding out more, um, feel free to visit linkfire.com slash pricing. Uh, we'd love to help you find um, the solution that matches you and your business needs. Um, one of the things we certainly do offer for our business level subscription is the ability to customize the subdomain of the link um, or to go further um, with um, offering some support for um, custom domains completely to make sure that both the domain or subdomain and the end of the URL, the suffix, um, are appropriately matching the needs of um, your promo uh, and giving your visitors the information they need when they click through um, to get to the goods they're looking for. Um, you also uh, have the opportunity to double check that your link source is appropriate, add um, an emergency fallback destination in the case a certain country is not allowing um, the, the certain uh, platform or website um, that they're looking for. Uh, you can also duplicate links completely as a new draft um, from their current setup, um, which can be really great uh, if you are looking to do additional A-B testing across um, any ad campaigns or any organic posting as well. Um, and when it comes to A-B testing and seeing what works best for your visitors, you would do that customizing in the customize section for your landing page. One thing to quickly cover before we get there is that um, we have built this uh, rescan link tool to help essentially allow um, for some time saving. Um, one of the things I uh, definitely um, don't miss about working major label releases is being up at midnight at store turn at a variety of um, different time zones to make sure that when the link turns over um, that everything is looking and functioning appropriately. Our link, uh, our rescan link tool allows you to preset and schedule for scans of your product, both um, in a complete um, services sense or for individual um, services themselves in the case of an exclusive release somewhere. Um, you can select the types of data you would like to, uh, to update or to stay the same. Um, but overall, this uh, allows us um, to pre-schedule some of those scans um, and be a bit more hands-off, save some time for some other priority uh, work that needs to get done. Um, one of those uh, pieces of important work is, uh, you know, trying to be as intentional as possible when you are creating and delivering um, links out into the marketplace. Um, so taking the time to customize your link for your audience, for your visitors, for the brands um, and the artists that you are promoting. Um, these are all incredibly valuable um, tasks to get into. And when you are um, uh, editing one of your links, you can click the customize landing page tab and you can get into a host of those options here. Um, one of the things uh, that we uh, offer to help streamline your global approach is offering a default setup for your landing page, but also allowing you on appropriate subscriptions, the ability to customize specific landing pages for specific territories. Whereas we may know that certain DSPs um, may be more appropriate or um, available slash unavailable in certain markets. We wanna make sure that each uh, audience that we're trying to reach 
um, feels served in um, the best way possible. Um, so you can do things like set up your default landing page. You can offer um, a media sample at the top of the page and give an opportunity for a visitor to um, experience a snippet of a product from a variety of delivery points. You can customize the description uh, or the title of uh, uh, your copy here and experiment with um, the messaging that may work for you. As well, you can do the same with your calls to actions in the buttons themselves. If you feel like certain messaging may work better for you or you'd like to experiment and see what type of messaging may increase um, your positive results, doing things um, like experimenting with your CTAs can be really valuable. Um, lastly, uh, rearranging and organizing your order of services is as simple as dragging and dropping. Uh, and again, this may help you get closer to that sweet spot for your audience, knowing what they may want or need um, and placing that towards the top of their list. Um, lastly, as far as creating links goes, one of the most important pieces of your experience is grabbing that link and delivering it to the place it needs to be out in the world. Um, when it comes to grabbing your links, it is as simple as um, hovering over your list or your tile, clicking the get button. When you are getting a link, you have a couple of options here. You can grab a link specifically to the landing page itself, um, at which point you could apply any additional channel tags so that you um, take a further step on um, making sure your data is as clean and actionable as possible. Um, and you can simply click copy so that you can use um, the links. We have some export functionality for a CSV of channel um, links as well. Um, additionally, um, it may be more appropriate for you to deliver a visitor directly to one of the services and skip over the landing page itself. This is essentially how our content style link works, where it's just an A to B, one to one um, delivery of content. You can do the same within a landing page. So if you want to use um, the uh, Linkfire link for this album, for example, but you want to deliver a visitor who clicks on it uh, straight to um, Pandora in the United States, you can grab this um, direct to service, direct to Pandora link, copy it and paste it um, where is most appropriate. Lastly, I think um, an important feature to call out is um, newer to the platform. It is our QR code um, service and one in which um, generating and um, deploying a QR code is as simple as copying and pasting, like grabbing a regular link. So if you needed to um, create a QR code, you would simply create accordingly and then download um, that QR code, place it where it needs to go. We also have the direct to service functionality built into our QR code tool as well. So if you are promoting um, a live event or um, within some type of physical context, you know that you the, rather the QR code um, direct to a specific destination. Um, it is just as simple to grab that direct to service QR code as well. Um, so Joss, as somebody who's been a part of the team, um, both um, helping customers navigate um, the tool, but also now um, as somebody who's helping build the technology, um, what are some general tips and tricks around um, the links and link types um, that you think might be valuable for our audience? Yeah, um, I mean, I think, you know, one important thing to think about is um, making sure that when you're running a campaign, you, you wrap everything in a smart link, in a link file link. So it's very easy, I, I think, to, to just think about it as, you know, I'm going to create a release link for my track or album, and then you put that out in the world. But then you might go and share, you know, just a link to a website or, um, you know, to an article. Um, you're losing, you don't have any data on that. So I'd really recommend wrapping everything in, in a content link, um, it's one of those link types you see there, which is just a, a straight up link shortener. It just allows you, if you just want to share um, any kind of website with your audience, you could just put that into a content link. It has a nice branded short code domain, and then you're collecting the data on that audience as well. Um, 
and on that note, I think I would also want to stress that, you know, it's important to think about a campaign as a whole, and that includes everything leading up to the release. Again, it's easy to sort of create your release link that week, share it with your fans. Um, but we, we have a variety of, of different features here for, for kind of cultivating that fan base and leading up to a, to a release. So a pre-release link is um, really important. So we're seeing that the popularity of that link type is just sort of going up and up, like more and more people are using, using those um, because it's a really good way of uh, understanding your fan base, who, the, who your kind of hardcore fans are, because if someone's willing to kind of go in there and click, yeah, I'll pre-save this ahead of time, it's a good indication that they're, they're a real fan. They're, you know, they're, they're really interested in what you're doing. Um, the other good, the good thing there is that you don't need to have, you don't even need to have a, a product released or, you know, already kind of logged with your distributor to set up a pre-release link. You could create one and get people pre-editing straight away. You could even not have written a song yet. You know, you could just say, pre-save my new release get that out into the world. People can start clicking pre-ad. All we're doing on our side is we're logging the people that want to uh, have that product on release date. And then you just need to, at some point before it's released, come in here, um, like Lou's showing, and add your release date and source. We will then scan it on that date, find the release and add it to people's libraries. So it's a really good way of doing it up, um, in advance. Um, and yeah, lastly, I would just say we, we also have... Um, on on most of the link types you can you can capture people's emails as well so part of the re uh, release link and pre-release links um will be coming on to bio link as well you can um it's you know third-party data is kind of getting harder and harder to, to collect now and it's really important to have that first party data so collecting fans email addresses is a really good way of then having you know a, a good um mailing list to, to hit up on release date so i would think do everything ahead of time use that data, use pixels to collect audiences on those links ahead of time. And then you've got a much stronger um, data set to, to start your actual kind of release part of the campaign with. Yeah, definitely all amazing advice um, from my side, uh, as far as just visibility of the industry goes. Um, QR codes have certainly come back with a force um, in the last couple of years. Um, so finding ways to integrate QR codes into your approach um, for live events, maybe utilizing them on merch tables or on um, live promo like posters uh, or billboards, um, finding sneaky ways to engage with and serve super fans, um, adding secret QR codes on the tags of merchandise like t-shirts um, or within other types of artwork, um, finding ways to continue to um, delight uh, within uh, the sort of fan adventure, um, you know, um, the experience of being a fan. Um, and lastly, uh, utilizing our playlist link and making sure that you are maximizing um, any and all engagements you have on the playlist side for your artists. Um, basically, you know, taking advantage of any editorial or algorithmic playlists that you might be added to and wrapping them in links, um, promoting them in a variety of ways with creative content. Um, also, making sure that you're taking advantage of promoting and enticing fans to add your music to their own uh, fan playlists on different streaming sites. Uh, sharing those on uh, your artist socials um, can help um, just showcase um, that relationship between the artist and their audience, show that love back to them, um, and give them that sort of push to continue to incorporate um, um, your music in their um, listening experience. Um, lastly, on the playlist side, one of the things you can do to increase your reach within algorithms on the social platforms is tag like artists or um, relative artists that are featured on the same playlists as you or um, your roster. Um, and make sure that the algorithm is pushing your posts and your music to new audiences and new fan bases that you might try to um, encourage to join your journey. Um, and as far as creating links go, I think that's the main bread and butter um, of the system. Um, we definitely want to jump next to discussing some of the insights. Um, and I'm just gonna make a quick screen share change back to our slides to make sure that we are protecting some of the sensitive 
um, data of our customer. Big shout out to um, Naxos um, and Jesse uh, on their team for allowing us to um, show uh, their board um, and give uh, the platform tour utilizing their system. Um, but let's get back to our slides um, and let's jump in and chat a bit about um, insights because one of the most important pieces of um, our system and um, one of the most important things to generate by using a tool like ours um, is um, the insights and the data that you collect from um, the users um, and the visitors that um, are a part of the mix. So um, overall, um, when we are collecting traffic that has been generated um, around our products and clicked through on our links, um, we are collecting um, a host of data that we hope to make um, actionable um, or impactful for you in your process. Um, so when you go to look at your insights at um, the link level, um, at some of the business level accounts, you have board level insights as well that help you understand aggregate data. Um, but overall, when you're looking at the insights for a link, um, you will get a top-down overview of that data. Um, so you'll be able to do some sorting based on um, the time block that you're interested in, um, and you'll be able to check out some important details as far as your visits go, um, your click-throughs from those visits, um, and potentially any streaming um, data, um, attribution data that we may be collecting. Um, one of the things that we like to focus on um, is understanding where our traffic came from so that we know how best to adapt our approach. Um, within um, our board level um, settings, we have the ability to create and then um, add on some channel tags so that we can guarantee an understanding of a visitor and where they are engaging from. Um, and Joss, maybe as we dive into um, data and into some of the important um, data points that we can, uh, we can collect within our system, um, it might be valuable for you to just take a quick moment to um, discuss what attribution data is and what the importance is of collecting this data uh, as a whole. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, so we, we sort of have two, two different types of data here. So, so what you're seeing here is, is you know, click data um, on the landing page itself. So a fan has come in and, and has clicked on your, on your landing page, and then you can see the services that they went out to if you are on the services tab. Um, but I guess a, a kind of age old problem in, in, with marketing is, is attribution, which essentially means, you know, being able to attribute something that's happened to something else that, that happened earlier on in that funnel. Um, you want to know if you're, you're running a campaign, you want, you want to put some money, behind a, an ad, you obviously want to know how many people have clicked on the landing page and where those people have clicked to, but you want to know what they have done when they've actually clicked through to that destination. Has it actually, uh, ha has it actually done what you hoped it would do? Um, so something we're really kind of passionately trying to, to solve is, is, is that problem. Um, what's happening on these services? And we've been uh, leveraging our really strong relationships with, with some of the biggest players, um, Apple Music, YouTube, uh, YouTube, YouTube Music, um, Pandora, and Gami, and a couple of others, um, Deezer, to be able to get data back from them. So when, when we send someone, a fan, into one of their services, they'll then tell us what that user did. And there's different data points depending on which service it is, which we can then display back in the... Uh, back in the streaming section of the insights for you here. So um, the importance of that is obviously huge. You want to be able to see how many streams have actually come from that particular ad you ran or wherever you had your, your link, um, what countries those streams happened in. In some cases we have um, adds to library as an event. So that's obviously a good indication if someone adds it to the library, they've obviously, they, they like it. It's not just to listen and, and, and move on. Um, so that's something we are, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a really important mission of ours and we're going to hopefully be continuing to, to, to introduce more partners into that. Um, but yeah, in many cases, you know, that's, that's exclusive to, to Linkfire. Apple music, um, for example, 
being being a big one. We're the only ones that that have this this streaming attribution. So it's important to uh, yeah to incorporate that into your um, into your campaigns, and I think optimize your 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 marketing with that data. Very much so. Um, and with some of these data points that we do collect, like location data, it can be both valuable uh, with our understanding of, you know, like you said, um, attributing our actions to the reactions that we were expecting or maybe not expecting, um, but also help us identify areas of opportunity as well. Um, if we proactively sort of think and want to create attention in a certain market or a certain territory, we can utilize um, that intention to help us adapt um, and customize the experience for that um, market or for that um, fan. Um, so as you mentioned, we get some of that location data, some of that service data. We get um, different types of data on device types um, and operating system, which can be valuable. Um, and as well, as Joss mentioned, this streaming data as well. Um, so some different insights um, on where and what streamed um, and some additional um, sales data as well. Um, and overall, um, with uh, this collected um, insight suite, um, and depending on um, your subscription setup, if you have the opportunity to look at things from a board level, from um, uh, the entire group of links within one board and how things have performed as a whole, um, you can continue um, to improve your approach um, and essentially feel more confident every time you are creating or deploying a new link into the marketplace um, that your efforts are uh, pushing you closer to the results that you're looking for. Um, and within that process, things get complicated because it is a quick moving business. It's a quick moving industry. Um, a lot of us are, are fairly stretched thin when we're supporting artists or working in these creative industries um, with a multitude of responsibilities um, and different tasks that we have to handle. So um, one of the last things to cover um, as far as our platform goes is some of the tools that we've built um, so that we are more able to streamline um, and save time uh, through some of these pursuits. So um, firstly, um, I like to mention um, channels and activity IDs. So um, as we discussed with um, our insights discussion, um, if we don't know um, certain pieces of information about um, our process, about our results, then we can't compare um, and contrast our efforts and pick and choose the right types of tactics. Um, so one of the things that you can do to help with this cause um, is at a, the board level of um, your setup, you can uh, create these channels. You can essentially mark with a two character code at the end of one of your links. Um, exactly what channel you've placed this link in so that um, regardless of the referral data that we can see um, within um, our system, that we know for a fact that using your Facebook ad link um, with the channel tag applied to it um, guarantees our knowledge um, of the data coming from that Facebook ad itself. We also have a second layer of specificity we can add called activity IDs. This is basically just another quick tagging system utilizing uh, an exclamation point and a custom short code of your choice um, to compare and contrast links um, from the same um, link fire setup um, or within the same campaign, but that may have had a variety of different applications within that campaign. Um, perhaps different copy or creative was used um, across posts and you wanted to understand um, those differences accordingly. Um, another thing to highlight at the board level is just um, this um, streamlining ability for your global setups. Um, we know that we have the opportunity to activate around the globe much more effectively than we ever have before. Um, so it makes the most sense to preset as much of that strategy as possible ahead of time so that every individual link you create doesn't need the specific hands-on touch. One of the things you can do um, with a board level setup is identify, pre-select the order that you'd like your services to be listed, um, pre-customize the copy for the buttons, the call to actions, um, and overall 
um, get ahead of any of those territory level or default customizations so that you can save your time for the specific changes you'd like to make um, to the individual links later, knowing that a bunch of the other stuff is already taken care of. Um, and lastly, um, we like to highlight our um, uh, ability to integrate for our uh, business advanced and above customers. Um, you want to be collecting as much um, visitor and uh, first and third party data as you can. Um, so we have a variety of integrations for pixels across platforms like Meta for Facebook and Instagram, um, for um, evolving and emerging platforms like TikTok. Um, and others like Snap and, and, and other tried and true uh, platforms to make sure that you are collecting the most data and getting the most out of the data that you have access to. Um, getting the most out of your music marketing is our main objective. Um, and overall, Joss, before we dive into some additional tips and tricks, any thoughts from you on... Um, any techniques, any tactics you've either um, seen used from your time at the company or used from your side, um, you know, on the business um, artist manager side of, uh, of our experience um, to just help save you time and to keep you on the important stuff you have to deal with? Um, yeah, I mean, just, uh, I guess, a little trick that I do like to point out, like a couple of sort of features that I think uh, are overlooked and, and just definitely time saving. Um, so we have what we call shortcuts. Um, and you can find, a, hopefully someone can post a, a link to, to this in our help center guide, but there is, uh, there's a bunch of different shortcuts. So if you take a live link fire link and you can add a forward slash at the end of it, and then a number of different shortcuts to get you somewhere. So you can do forward slash edit. That'll take you straight into the edit page for that link in the suite without having to log in and find the link and click edit there. Um, you can also click forward slash insights on any link that you own. That will take you straight to the insights page. Um, if you wanted to see how your link looks for a visitor from another country, you can do a uh, forward slash lang forward slash and then the two letter country code. And it will look, you'll, you'll appear as if you're coming from that territory. You can see it, it will have different language, um, different services if you configured it that way. Um, so yeah, just a little something that I think people maybe don't know about. Um, can, I mean, it certainly saves me a lot of time when I'm navigating around. Um, and I would also just also flag that you can turn any link into a widget as well. Um, if you want to see how that looks, take a look, uh, take a link, put forward slash widget, and you'll actually be able to see how it would appear as a widget. If you want to then embed that widget onto your own website, um, then you can also find a guide in the Health Center article with the HTML code that you would just copy, replace one section with your URL, your link file URL. And that's it. You just embed that, um, and you've got yourself a nice, a nice widget. So um, yeah, probably there's just a couple of tips that I'd flag at this point. Amazing. Um, always looking for um, better ways to um, you know continue to do the work that we need to, um, and ways to sort of improve our approach and the ways that we think about um, the efforts that we're putting forth for our customers or for um, the art that we're trying to uh, promote. Um, and uh, in doing so, just wanted to wrap up before our questions with some additional marketing tips um, and insights from our experience that may help you um, uh, with these um, ongoing um, efforts and approaches. Um, so um, these are our five W's. Um, it seems fairly uh, straightforward, um, but is just really valuable when you add context to your approach. Uh, we know that certain things can be mechanical. We can check boxes by simply creating a release link and posting it a single time. Um, but understanding um, the various reasons um, and elements um, to your approach can help you improve it and intentionalize it that much more. Um, so normally, um, who would be the first W, but we like to lead with the why here on our team. Uh, so understanding what your overall objective is for your campaign for this link itself, um, you know, and um, the why's inherently around your activities can help you um, identify more creative ways um, to um, promote your products, um, identify additional tactics for doing so um, that show value um, and help you achieve your objectives um, um, with your efforts. 
Um, also um, important to know who the link is for. Um, who is the artist or the brand that you're representing within the link? Um, and how is that reflected within the user experience or the way that the links are displayed and presented um, to your visitors? Where um, are these links going? Um, you know, what type of space um, are they going to be in and what elements of that location or that part of the marketplace um, give you opportunity or create challenge for you? Um, is there anything you can learn about where the links or where your audience might be um, that could help you um, ahead of time in your link creation process and improve the experience of those visitors um, a step or two um, in the process? What even are um, you promoting with this link? Uh, what kind of product is it? Uh, what type of things do you know about um, the space that that product lives in? Uh, are there ways to empower your messaging um, by curating your visitor's experience further with that knowledge you have of um, the space that you're operating in and um, what exactly it is you are trying to bring forward to the world? Uh, and lastly, when, um, you know, when are you letting this messaging go live in, uh, in the world? How often are you circulating these links? Um, you know, um, timing um, and the timeline of your campaign can be key when uh, uncovering what um, efforts were more or less um, successful for you, more or less effective. Um, this can also be very valuable when it comes to um, comparing your results for your paid campaigns and your organic campaigns. Um, and what type of timelines you were um, looking to investigate further with those um, efforts. Um, just wanted to highlight again that QR codes are here. Um, this image is actually from um, a live activation from one of our customers. Um, and overall, um, live events are coming back with a force. Digital events um, as live events, whether they're live streams or pre-recorded, also um, opportunities for engaging with um, visitors or new fans via QR codes, um, utilizing them in digital materials, uh, finding ways to include them in promo media um, for socials, finding ways to use them in ad campaigns like um, a super successful Super Bowl campaign um, that sort of broke the internet earlier this year. Um, that was very simply a QR code that was bouncing around almost old school Windows desktop style. Um, and again, um, you know, um, maximizing um, your opportunities with super fans and improving that fun factor um, of their experience. Little things like hiding QR codes as treasure hunt items um, or overall giving those extra elements um, to improve their experience. Um, and lastly, um, be aware of going global. Um, there is sort of an old school type of um, mentality about cornering your home market first, um, your hometown, your home city, and then building outward. Um, but there's really no reason that you can't be um, activating and identifying opportunities all around the globe in cities and countries um, abroad um, from wherever you sit in the world at present. Um, so experiment with those territory specific um, landing pages with campaigns um, that have various elements of the creative um, uh, chosen to complement um, a specific territory. Um, and overall utilize those location insights um, to adjust um, you know, the amounts of activations you are putting forth, the amount of links that you are sending out into the marketplace. Um, to improve those results you are, are looking to create um, in a variety of different markets worldwide. So um, just a couple of key takeaways. Um, music promo does not start on release day. This is sort of an ongoing effort um, when it comes to thinking intentionally about our products, our artists, our brands, and our approaches. Um, this is something that will continue to go on as the days flow in and out. Um, so be sure to, uh, to approach that accordingly um, and utilize the full mix um, of tools um, and features at your disposal um, to make the most of those opportunities. Uh, sharing your link fire links everywhere and wrapping um, all of the links that you need to be a part of your campaigns in uh, the link fire suite um, can be incredibly powerful. Um, don't share those raw links from YouTube um, or the descriptions, um, you know, 
make sure that you're capturing as much data as you can to improve your efforts. And lastly, uh, think global, uh, be aware of this exciting world around us um, and all that is changing and evolving within it um, in ways that you can continue to make the most um, of any of these um, blossoming ideas um, and trends uh, that are making headway um, within the business. Um, and with that, I know that we've chatted through quite a bit already in uh, the first 15 minutes of our session, but we wanted to make sure that we wrapped up with a Q&A, uh, answered a couple of the questions that we had ahead of time, um, but also uh, addressed some thoughts we may have gotten live. So Joss, um, if you wanted to dive in um, with one of those questions up front, I can take a look For at sure. that and grab yeah. something new. I'll, um, I, I'm actually hoping I can, can answer a couple of questions. Um, we had one in advance, um, and I see a couple of similar questions in the chat, which I'm hoping I can kind of wrap up. So also Perfect. I think um, Anya and I think Thomas have both uh, posted some questions around this. Um, so the, the question was really around best practice when you have uh, products with different UPCs for physical and digital um, and how to kind of combine those on landing pages, make sure it's, we're matching with the right products. Um, so. I think as I kind of touched on earlier, like we're not only using UPC um, as, the, as the piece of data to, to match products with. We're also using um, track names, artist names, a bunch of different bits of data. We also, um, in many cases, the different services link physical and um, digital UPCs. So, so something like Amazon, um, we would have to be able to see, which is, uh, we would get both. So if you use a, if you're scanning a link using a digital uh, UPC or a link to your album on Spotify, we'll go out and look on other services, say Amazon, who have physical products like vinyl. And if we don't find the, a match with the same UPC, we'll use the the, the album name uh, or some other piece of data to, to try and find that same match. So most of the time, you'll find that we will match correctly the digital and physical products for the right store. Um, you could also, if you wanted to, scan an individual service using a different source. So you can scan a link using your digital uh, source. You can then either by scheduling a rescan or just going into your service destinations, add, say, let's use Amazon as an example again, the vinyl, just go into your local Amazon store, wherever you're based, add the... Uh, URL for that in the default, and there's a little rescan button. We'll then scan to find the matches in every territory for that same product. Um, lastly, if you have multiple versions of a product, so you have a um, yeah, a couple of different physical versions, you can add multiple versions, multiple versions of the same store on a landing page. So where you might have um, again, let's use Amazon, Amazon Music. You can actually search in the server. You can, there's a little ad service search for Amazon. You actually find Amazon 2, Amazon 3, Amazon 4. So you can add a second, third, fourth version of that logo onto the landing page where you could then just manually paste in or scan for the product using the relevant source. Um, and you can also change the call to action on the landing page if you want to differentiate. So if you want to say, you know, one of them is CD and one is vinyl, you could use that call to action text that, that Lou showed earlier to, um, to make it clearer for the user um, where they're going. Um, I think that pretty much answers it. I think Thomas was maybe it was also around how that works with, with regards to pre-release. Um, so you give us a source ahead of time. On the release date, we'll go out and scan for all of the services. And whatever the, the, the digital, the product that we um, find for those, for Apple, Deezer, Spotify will get added to their library. What you can do on that pre-release link is with those three services, you can add additional ones. So the pre-release link by default will just have Amazon, Deezer, and Spotify, but you can add to it a link to a physical store with um, you know, your, your vinyl pre-order as well. And then on release date, we'll add all of the other services that we find a match for. Um, so I hope that kind of answers uh, those three questions, which are all kind of linked together. 
Um, yeah, I think it, that is really great insight, Joss. I'm seeing a couple things here. Um, like you mentioned, this question on combining pre-release and release links, as well a question on custom stores. Um, so that is something that I did want to highlight and can be incredibly valuable. Anyone who's on a, a, a personal pro plan or above um, can submit for and create custom destinations for um, their landing pages. So for example, if I'm working an artist and I want a custom logo for his website, for his destination, one that is specific to the album that we're releasing, um, all you need to do is reach out to biz, B-I-Z, support at linkfire.com or help at linkfire.com and submit the name of the custom store and the image, the PMG image that you'd like us to use within our system. Um, and our support team on the back end can help facilitate that. That can be really great for making sure that your co-branded campaigns and products like exclusive um, merch runs or exclusive vinyl, um, et cetera, um, are looking and um, functioning um, in a way that's both relevant and helpful for the visitor, for the fan, but also helps you with your relationship with your collaborator and gives you that um, leg up um, with taking care with their brand. Um, I can take another question that we had in advance here. There was a question, how, how can I execute giveaways with Linkfire? Um, so we have one of our link types that we kind of glossed over earlier was the um, rewards link. Um, really worth going and checking that out. It's a way that you can offer some kind of uh, reward for taking an action. So a fan can either subscribe, um, uh, sorry, follow on Spotify, subscribe to a YouTube channel or give an email address. And then in exchange, you can offer a secret link to some content, add them to a, um, it could be a kind of competition entry or um, perhaps a coupon code. So that's a really good way of kind of cultivating a, a fan base. Um, and sort of lead, doing something leading up to, to, to a release as well. Um, Certainly. I, and, oh, I think just, that's, that's a great place just to plug um, and sort of wrap this all into this question of combining links or combining pre-release and, and release links. Um, for, for one, just important to note that a pre-release link that you create and schedule to um, go live will automatically convert into a release link. So you don't have to create multiple links for one product for a campaign in that regard. Um, but as well, by incorporating and adding additional destinations, um, you can use a pre-release link to promote your other products like playlists or to add the pre-release mechanism to, say, the um, link that you're primarily using to promote a playlist. Um, combining these elements and incorporating um, those different types of products you're trying to promote um, can just be really valuable in your tactics and offer additional bites at the Apple for the fans that you're hoping to activate. Um, I had a question, we had a question in advance as well around bio links, you know, are, are bio links best for, for socials? Um, obviously, that's a kind of sub subjective question. I think, though, I would, um, I would say yes. I think the, the, the great thing about bio links are that, so a fan coming into somewhere like Instagram, where you do just have that one spot for your, for your link, it's, fans can come in at any point, uh, or new potential new fans, people will come in at any point. So to assume that they're only going to be interested in that thing that you're currently promoting um, is maybe a mistake. I think the great thing about BioLinks is it's essentially a little microsite. You can say, you know, here's my latest release. Here's some other releases. You can link them to, uh, to videos. You can capture emails there. You can, you know, send them to a merch store. So it's a really good way of just having that one entry point. Um, and from there, letting them decide what's relevant to them. Obviously, if you're at a point in your campaign where you're very specifically looking at, you know, just streams on this track, then, you know, you have to make that decision. Um, and on that note, it's worth just noting for anyone who is already a Linkfire customer and has been using BioLinks, we are actually currently working on a um, new and updated shiny version of our BioLinks um, based on a lot of feedback we've had. And um, we're really excited to, to, to roll that out later in, uh, in, in the coming months. It's got a lot of flexibility. You're able to uh, add a lot more um, of your, your own branding to it. And if you want a little sneak peek of one of those, um, you can scan this QR code um, or visit the, the bio.to forward slash linkfire. Amazing. 
Um, and as we are coming to time, I just wanted to thank you again, Joss, uh, for being here with us um, and sharing some of these additional insights and sneak peeks into the platform. Um, thank and thank um, our whole audience um, for being here, um, for spending some time with us today, learning a bit more about Linkfire um, and getting some walkthrough as far as our Linkfire 101 session went. Um, Obviously, we couldn't get to every single question that's come through, um, but looking forward to uh, re-engaging you all after the session and continuing to learn more and grow with you all. Um, so feel free to reach out to us at the Linkfire team if there's anything specifically that we can provide um, support on. Um, but otherwise, we are hoping that this is the first of a series of webinars that we will continue to roll out. So keep your eyes peeled um, for additional updates from us on future sessions um, where we will dig into more um, exciting info and tactics around the Linkfire world and the Linkfire platform. Um, so thank you again. Hope you all have a great rest of your day or evening, depending on where you are checking in from. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, everyone. Cheers, everybody.